consumer good companies are now kind of uh, rethinking what investments are critical to make into their supply chains. And what we see, at least with the bigger players, is that they have to stop thinking fragmented country by country or plant by plant, uh, product by product category, but rather taking a higher level view in and around how does my supply chain overall needs to be orchestrated? How do I create that overview, that um, visibility across the multitude of my flows? And where can I potentially then make amends or improvements? And technology-wise, that is only achievable when I start connecting these different pieces more than I have in the past. The, te the technology itself, if it's whatever system now on either side is probably less important, but it's more make them speak together, <laughs> make them connect more so that actually you can create a higher level visibility and decision making uh, than what you had before. And there's already a lot happening in the market on this right now. I, I would split it into four components, uh, four sort of key strategies. Um, First is alternative uh, uh, supply options. We sort of mentioned that also a little bit before the redundancy, but alternative supply options, either you know multi-sourcing or near-sourcing, sometimes people refer to. But I, I, what we see is that people tend more towards a multi-sourcing type approach. Um, visibility end to end is the second point, um, including the capability to steer, and I think that's the synchronicity component. Uh, being in a place that you can be fast to understand the consequences so that you can capture the capacity that is likely going to be limited in the event of a crisis. Uh, and then the, the third is uh, uh, around having pre-prepared uh, um, alternative flows and storage options in place or that you can uh, access or activate um, to be able to handle um, the changes that are going to come along the way. Artificial intelligence and uh, is offering great opportunities for all companies, not only FMCG, to actually get closer to a more short-term demand and react to that. Um, building algorithms, building uh, kind of using not only the historical data, but much more close to the actual um, happening in their either store or uh, direct uh, consumer uh, sales on what is actually needed and to feed that back into their production planning um, in, in, their, in their factories and maybe even further up into their supply planning for their raw materials. So, I think already now a lot of FMCG companies are investing heavily in that, especially on the production side and on the raw materials planning side. I think there's less so investment on the downstream towards the actual retailers and distributors to really connect those to get a better idea on how I actually should be um, yeah, fine-tuning my, uh, my delivery planning in and around what products are needed in which warehouse of what uh, distributor or retailer. So I think on that one, um, there is maybe more collaboration still to be coming forward in the future to, to kind of get these two uh, closer together and the technology around AI and demand planning or demand sensing actually will help tremendously with that in my view. So no doubt uh, uh, the e-commerce side of, uh, of business for consumer goods companies has really had a shot in the arm. And I think this presents two real benefits for these companies. The first one is the opportunity to get a much closer and direct engagement with their customers and drive both customer experience and loyalty out of that. And the second one is in and around uh, um, being able to uh, really understand their demand patterns and where the products are actually being consumed and be able to build that information and insights into uh, more accurate uh, forecasting, demand sensing and forecasting and, and, and therefore also supply chain planning. From what I can see is there is a, an opportunity for FMCG companies here because consumer goods companies usually don't have access directly to their end consumers. 
while now during COVID, a lot have started to directly sell to end consumers, own the data of their end consumers, own the preferences of these end consumers, use that to develop new products, um, additional features of their products, collect information about the demographics, the age, and all of that kind of information about these consumers, which previously were owned almost exclusively by the retailer. So it's a big opportunity for these consumer goods companies to build a direct connection, a different type of loyalty between their consumers and their own products, which I think a lot more of these companies want to make use of now after COVID has basically allowed them to get in there, probably to the dismay of the retailers on that end. So I think that is probably where it can uh, affect them in a positive way. Um, at the same time, it also requires investment to be actually able to process and use these data. And I would assume um, at least the smaller players haven't done that investment yet. These, if, if, in our experience and from what we uh, observe with many of our customers, uh, then we see that uh, very often uh, the uh, physical uh, logistics planning activities are quite disconnected from the end-to-end -end supply chain planning activity. In fact, even quite siloed often uh, between the different functions inside the company. Uh, and, 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 and there's plenty of evidence that everybody is trying to integrate much more those planning activities. But still today, I think there is a lot of potential to bring these uh, activities together and manage it in a much more integrated and aligned uh, fashion. And I believe e-commerce is part will partly drive that.